Hi, everyone. It's really a fascinating world we live in when so much of computer systems that underlie almost everything we do, you come in contact as a child via things like, you know, an iPad or a smartphone. And it causes this huge schism between what your experience of a computer is and what's actually going on under the covers. And perhaps in the old days, it was sort of a very straightforward thing, right? I mean, some computer science department set up a Unix server, you got an account on it, you went to a terminal room, <laughs> talk about a distraction-free environment, and you had to write code at a command prompt. Uh, and then, you know, we evolved that to things like SSH. But really, between our dramatic increase in scale, like, so my next semester is 300 students, I'm trying to go from that initial sort of perception of what computing is as a software computer scientist down to how does it all really work? And this has always been a problem, is how do we bridge that gap between concept, reality, and it being vocationally based on real skills? And Red Hat was, you know, has this platform which built out of open source has constructed for data science, right? Jupyter Books and Jupyter Notebooks are really a data science platform. And some of us got the crazy idea that, hey, you know something, if you squint, we might be able to actually just turn this into a good old fashioned terminal desktop based environment, all accessible through a web browser, but it's containerized. Secondly, all the lecture material and in-class experience could be on exactly the same platform because in reality, it's not just the terminal server. And my student experience at the time when they go back to their dorm rooms and they're hacking away at code, on the other hand, is like a classic sitting in the dark with a green terminal and you're trying to figure out what to do. So, and finally, of course, the final component being of that though, the necessity to scale that. So it turns out that this containerized uh, data science platform running on top of an on-demand service like Amazon really is our best of all worlds. We are back to the future. We've got a terminal-based environment to teach everything from out of real software all the way up to our lecture materials and our discussion materials and our textbook all in one place. So I hope with that, you um, get a sense of the real power that at least we've found to be leveraged from the kind of relationships we're seeing where cloud platforms are empowering not just um, someone out there on their uh, smartphone, but all the way across the stack to allowing us to educate future computer scientists. So let me just show you a couple of things that sort of bridge and, and show you how we've sort of bridged the gap from what we'd like our student experience to be and what we've been able to actually really quite deliver. So if, if for those folks who remember, once upon a time, that was our student experience, right? was a classic terminal, students got the real life experience of sitting in a distraction-free environment, being forced to grapple with not having all those layers and really understanding how things work. Now, let me show you quickly what we've been able to do by leveraging Red Hat's data science platform and Amazon's ability to scale these containerized environments for us. One of the things that many of us might remember from our own educations is the idea that we would have gotten an account on a Unix server. We would have then uh, had to figure out either in an old terminal room or some way on a local machine to get an SSH connection into that system. And then we were sort of brought into the fold of understanding Unix and understanding how software was constructed. 
one of the really brilliant things that we've been able to get here is a balance between that world and perhaps what we would think of as the modern world. So first, let me just quickly walk you through what my students would now uh, experience as their foray into the Unix environment. So first, uh, what you're seeing is my web browser. So they, it doesn't matter what platform they're on, they can pull up the course uh, infrastructure site and be presented with a login uh, uh, prompt. I guess I'm already two-factored authenticated, so unfortunately you didn't get to see that part, but typically if I hadn't cached my credentials, I would have been forced to go through the university two-factor authentication. Once that was done, I would end up here at what is a Jupyter notebook distributed environment. So this is called Jupyter Hub. For those of you who know, it is the uh, launch pad to getting an individual container running for you, which will then be feeding or servicing this web connection. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting the container that's for my, that the I as a professor have curated for my class and I'm starting it up. And as this is happening, what is of course going on under the covers is we have an entire infrastructure being spun up and created on top of AWS. Servers potentially being spawned, a container being started up, and then the software that, that we've curated into that container, a Linux stack compatible with a data science platform. There is my wonderful, unfriendly, clutter-free environment. So for those of you familiar with Jupyter, this doesn't look terribly Jupyter-like. As a matter of fact, we've been able to configure it so all we get is the ability to start a terminal. And that's my students' experience. My students' experience is that they can start with a real live Unix system where they can use all the tools that fundamentally have led to the construction of all the software we see around us, despite it looking crude from their perspective. So that is one aspect of this environment, right? Is that the student experience is simply from a web browser. We haven't asked them to install anything, and yet we're getting them a full-blown industrial grade Unix environment that is theirs and they can work with. Yet we have complete control of it. Now, similarly, that very same environment, when I use it in the classroom, now it feels more Jupyter-like. So here is a Jupyter notebook that's been turned into lecture hall style environment. And here, the nice thing is, unlike a traditional PowerPoint environment, every aspect of my lecture notes is actually live. And I can pull up terminals and build code and walk through with my students exactly the same thing they're gonna do back in their dorm rooms. So this has been, I know it seems a little silly that a big deal, but it's really a big deal for us because knowing that the underlying bits and pieces are consistent and I'm not gonna have versionitis. I'm not going to be able, I don't have to pretend and construct a pseudo assembly code, but we can write Intel 64-bit assembly code and debug it in the same environment is really a game changer for us when we need to scale to you know, 300 plus students. And finally, these same lecture notes and that same environment can be used to build textbooks. Nice, high quality textbook-like material where I get to not have to, you know, or I, I don't have to beg a publisher. I can build an environment and content that is going to be synced up well with the underlying teaching infrastructure. As a matter of fact, as you can see here, my textbook pages have content that was 
built out of that same container environment with real man pages, with real abilities to have them write assembly code and debug assembly code, understand what the linker is. And now we get this nice three pillar kind of construction. We have a student experience built out of exactly the same containerized environment that's on demand and spun up for them. So that, you know, just before the deadline on um, uh, Sunday night, 300 plus students can be banging away and spinning up containers and writing their assembly code to the same environment being used in our classroom. And finally, to the same environment being used to author and construct textbook material. So again, I hope you found that sort of an interesting take on how we can build and ensure a future in which students get an opportunity to learn about how things work under the covers.